refreshing for the guys to kind of move over to Walford and uh, start game planning and you know looking at their defense. And when you're in fall camp, you're really preparing for the whole season, so you have a, a large amount of your playbook that's in. And then uh, now we kind of go back and and uh, refine it just to what we're going to run against Walford, and so we're able to watch them on video. And so I think it's. You know, the guys know they're excited uh, getting within a week here of uh, the game. Uh, so there's a, a new energy today. I thought there was a really good focus uh, among the guys and good execution. How's the tempo been? you think you're going to be able to reach your target of 80 pros again? Yeah, I think uh, it's something that we put a lot of focus in and uh, something especially these first two games. Uh, you know, it's, it's been hot out here the last two weeks, and so that's something that we've talked to our guys about is, hey, the hotter it is, the faster we need to go and uh, really have a chance to wear down the defense and, and uh, you know, play fast and keep it simple. You know, that's kind of our, our uh, thoughts here as we start the season. Has that starting five offensive line been totally strong all the way through? Has anybody come close to kind of trying the first group? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, we feel very good with the starting group. And to be honest, I think the best thing is we haven't noticed them, you know, as we've as we've kind of gone through over the last week or so, I mean, the guys have, I think they've got a good chemistry and um, you know, I think everybody kind of knows where they are and what their job is. And so, you know, we, we fully expect, you know, that first group to be able to go out there and execute. And then what we're excited about is we think we have five guys behind them. So we, we really think we have 10 guys that can go play. And, you know, I, I don't know how many years you'd have to go back, but just of recent, I don't think we felt like going in the season that we had 10 guys that could go in and operate and be able to play. And uh, so, you know, we're, we're uh, pleased with the progress of where we've come since the spring and then where we've come uh, since the first uh, week and a half of spring ball or uh, fall camp. Now that you've seen the young guys perform at the wide receiver position, looking at your group as a whole, where do you rank this kind of depth versus the wide receiver units you've had in the past? Well, I think the potential is you know we could have really uh, seven to eight guys that really could roll and play. I think in the past, obviously we've had some very talented guys, but I don't know if, if we've had seven guys that really could go out there and roll and, and not really have that big of a drop off. And so a lot of it's gonna depend on you know the freshmen, how they do. It's different practice and games getting out there and that'll be something we're gonna throw them out there and, and uh, see how they react. But if they come on like we think they will, and uh, Hunter Renfro, if he plays in the game like he's been consistently playing in practice, you know we feel like we'll have seven or eight guys that can roll and play, and uh, that'll just you know help our depth as the season goes, and also allow us to play fast because we can substitute guys in and really uh, keep the pressure on the defense. How much value? How much more value has it been to have a guy like Brandon Streeter who can focus on the quarterbacks? Yeah. And rather than being distracted by a lot of the oversight of the game plan and that kind of thing. Uh, it's been great. I mean, Brandon, first of all, he's been great in our room with Tony and myself because he's been a coordinator, so he's got experience. So, you know, Tony and I have spent four years kind of knee deep in this offense, and uh, it's good to have a perspective from somebody from the outside where we can kind of bounce things off of, ask him how he did a few things. So he's been really good uh, for our coaches in our room. And then I think he's done an excellent job with the quarterbacks. And, uh, you know, we're all on the same page as coaches. You know, we meet together, quarterbacks and receivers spend time meeting together, so we're all talking the same language. And I think that is uh, very key is the chemistry between the quarterback and the skill guys to know what guys are going to do in different situations. Because obviously the defense, they're not always going to line up and play the exact coverage you think. So you've got to be able to kind of uh, respond to things as they happen. Uh, but, you know, Brandon's done an excellent job, and I think uh, he's a great fit and I'm um, excited about uh, seeing how we do here going through the year. McLean said the other day that the thing, one of the things that's been most noticeable to him about Deshaun is his ability to do things even beyond where a guy with his minimal experience actually can do in terms of getting them in the right fits uh, for, for coverages. Yeah. Deshaun has a very uh, high capacity for knowledge and learning. And so, you know, I think last year uh, he went out just learning the offense and did a lot of things naturally. And I think now this year he understands uh, the offense even better than he did last year. 
and really he's kind of becoming a master of the offense, a coach on the field. Um, you know, is able to go up and check plays at the line and get us into the right protections. And, um, you know, and a lot of that has to do with the meeting room with uh, Coach Streeter, you know, the communication they have. And that's really where we've challenged Deshaun to kind of take it to the next level is really kind of be that voice on the field, be that coach on the field and, and know when he can change things and get us in the right call. And uh, I think, you know, that's something that uh, he has a very high capacity to be able to do things like that. The other night, Darrell Barry had to go get the last player off the field and, and that was Garrett Williams. And it's something I've seen quite a bit. Have you seen a freshman with that kind of work ethic? Yeah, we, we've had a few freshmen come through the last few years that are kind of special and, and different than your average freshman coming in. And, uh, you know, Garrett's a guy, and, and I think maybe a lot of people were surprised as we started throwing his name out, you know, the first week or two of, of uh, fall camp. But, uh, you know, he's a guy that's very focused, and uh, he's, I think he'll be ready for his opportunity. Obviously, getting in a game and having the game experience and all that's, you know, going to be very beneficial for him. But uh, he's a hard worker, and, you know, I, I would say there probably haven't been many tight ends that have come in that uh, you know we've felt as comfortable putting them right out there game one as him. We've had some receivers, obviously, and some other skill guys, but I think he's probably one of the first tight ends in a while that's uh, come in and, and done so well in fall camp that you know we feel like we can put him out there and, and let him go in the first game. Where does he fit in right now? Is it more of a blocker? Can he catch that? I mean, yeah, I mean, we we uh, you know he can do a lot of things. I think he's a versatile guy. Um, you know, he's. Sometimes at that position you get a guy that's more of a receiver and then sometimes you have a guy that's maybe more of a blocker and really what you're looking for is a guy like Dwayne Allen that can really do both and you don't have to make substitutions. And uh, he's definitely not Dwayne Allen at this point, but I do think he does everything we're asking. He has the potential to do all of those type of things and uh, so that's beneficial and you know, he'll be involved in our short yardage game as well. And uh, But you know, we'll see how he does, he's just a freshman and. Um, we'll see how he does when he gets out there and live bullets are, are going, but he's he's being used as a regular three back in a, a lot of different situations right now. From a coach's perspective, does it affect the way you, you challenge your guys mentally and with the game plan when you're not facing a ranked opponent the first week or a big road game or something like that? Well, I, I think the thing that got our guys' attention in 2011 when we played Wofford, we had eight of our 11 offensive starters went on to play in the NFL. Many of those guys are still playing, but we had eight of the 11 that have at least played at some point in the NFL. Taj Boyd, Andre Ellington, DeAndre Hopkins, Jerron Brown, Sammy Watkins, Dwayne Allen, uh, uh, Big McLean, offensive line, and then Dalton Freeman. So we had eight of 11 guys that went on to play in the NFL we're losing at halftime and going in the fourth quarter, it's a one point game, we end up winning by eight. And so I think our guys were surprised to see that. And so we've watched that 2011 video. And I mean, every time we scored and every time we got the ball back, Wofford's back up in the lead. And it was a dog fight to the very end. So the big emphasis on our guys has been, it's not about the opponent that we're playing, it's about our execution. You know, Coach Sweeney says it all the time, you know, we're playing Clemson 12 times. You know, we feel like we're talented enough that if we go out, execute, and take care of our business, that it doesn't matter who we play. And that's the mentality that we want our guys to have. But, you know, I think it was a little eye-opening for those guys to watch that video from 2011. A lot of players that they know that have all gone off the NFL, and we didn't execute that day. And uh, we weren't very sharp. And, uh, you know, I, I think that uh, we feel the last few years, we've, we've started off pretty good in, in game one. Our guys have been focused, ready to play. I know they'll be excited, but it's really not about who we play, it's about how we play. And that's something Coach Sweeney's done a really good job of sending that message to our players over the last uh, four years. Do you remember the booze? <laughs> At halftime, I do remember the booze. Uh, Coach Morris, uh, we talked about that the other night, coming off the field at, at Walford. But going back, watching that game, you know, we just, it was a lot of very poor execution. And uh, so, I think our guys will be focused. They're excited, and they know they don't. They work so hard year round, just like all the college football players do. And you get so few opportunities, and uh, so there's really no weeks to to take a week off. And uh, I think the fact that it's our first game is really going to help us because our guys are excited and been ready to get out there and play again. Has Trevion Thompson maintained his high level of play the last week or two? Yeah, he has. Um, you know, he's been sharp. He's got things he wants to continue to improve on. I thought he had a really good day today. And, uh, you know, my big challenge to him is I've seen improvement in practice. 
and now we got to carry that over to the game and uh, be able to see that improvement there. But uh, I'm really pleased with where Trevion is and, and hope he'll get some good opportunities uh, next Saturday. When we talked to you last week, Dion was still struggling with some of the nuances of the game. Has he stepped it up a little bit? Yeah, I think the fact that we've kind of pared it down now to what we're going to – our install for Wofford. And, you know, in fall camp, like I said, we've got a lot of the offense in. We, we don't carry that much offense into any game. So now that we're kind of starting over with our install and uh, for this game, I think that's really helped him. And uh, I've seen this week uh, he's able to play a little bit faster because he knows what he's doing. And uh, so that's the progress you look for a young guy. And, uh, you know, nothing like game experience, uh, getting out there and doing it. But uh, hopefully, you know, this next week he'll continue to make progress and uh, we'll feel good enough about uh, him getting a chance to get out there and uh, play a little bit. With Dion, Ray Ray, really any first year freshman, do you have to treat them a little differently if they have a bad route, a bad day or anything like that? You treat them differently than you might have better? Well, you know, I think there's a fine line. Uh, you know, with those talented guys, you know where they're going to be in a year or two. So it's it's really important right now that you coach them extremely hard and you kind of put them, put them through that pressure cooker. Because when those guys get a little bit older, it's a little bit easier for them. And so, you know, there's a kind of a break-in process that has to go go on. And they typically a freshman doesn't know how intense and how serious a college game day is. And so we've got to kind of put them – you know, in that situation in practice and make them feel a little bit of pressure in practice. But at the same time, they are just learning. They're freshmen. You don't want them to lose their confidence and all that. So there's a fine line. You kind of pick and choose your spots, um, you know, but you're challenging them one minute and then another minute you're really uh, praising them and, and helping them whenever they do something right, you know, trying to encourage them uh, as well. But it's definitely back and forth and it's a struggle for those guys. I mean, it's you know, they're getting put through it right now. And, and then you add school on top of it, you know, and they're trying to figure out, you know, how to get over here for weights in the morning, how to get to class, how to get back over here in time for the meeting before they even get to the practice field. They've got a lot of other things they're just trying to figure out because it's the first time they've ever done it. And uh, so that's typical for a freshman, but um, it, it gets easier for them as they go. Going back to, to Garrett, if he's not going to redshirt, you obviously think he's going to play a lot. Where does he kind of fit on the depth chart right now? Yeah, you know, I think, uh, you know, he's up there enough that we think he's going to play a good bit. I don't think it's fair to say right now going into a week before the game exactly where he is. But, you know, I would say he's he's within the top four uh, of that the, of that group where we think he's going to get enough reps, you know, for him to be able to uh, make the best use of his freshman year. And then how he does in the first couple games and how those other guys, we've been pleased. I mean, Garrett's not the only one out of those tight ends that's been playing well. He's just the only freshman. So that's why it's become a big deal, uh, the progress that he's made. But, you know, we've seen Cannon Smith, Mylan, um, uh, Jordan Leggett's a guy that's really made a lot of strides uh, from where he's come. And, and obviously being the starter, that's one thing we've ex expected from him. But you know, there's nothing like competition, so hopefully everybody will get out there, those first three or four guys, get some experience, and uh, and then we'll go from there each week, and the guy that's playing the best will get an opportunity to go out there and play. Do you expect the production from tight end to be more like 2011-12, the way you use those guys then? Yeah, I, I feel like we're we're better at where we are right now at tight end than where, we, where we've been the last two years. You know, 2011, other than watching that one Wofford game, I can't, you know, I know Dwayne had a great year. Um, you know, but I can't really remember exactly everything. But I do feel like in the last two or three years that uh, we're in a better spot than we've been. And uh, you know, a lot of that's just those young guys kind of maturing and growing up. And, uh, you know, Jordan's a big part of that. He's, he's a guy that's had a, a really good spring and a good fall camp that maybe a lot of people aren't talking about. And, you know, in the past he was getting noticed for all the poor things and poor habits and all that he had on the field. But, he really, uh, you know, has not been a distraction or anything like that. Um, so we're hoping this could be a big year for him. What's the plan for the first game or two with Kelly to try to get him some time? Yeah, that's a good question for Coach Sweeney. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I think that we've talked about that, you know, we would like to play him. Uh, but, you know, Nick has done really well. And uh, we, we want to get Nick some experience too. And uh, so, you know, we'll just have to see how the games go. And, you know, we, if, if we're in a position uh, where – Nick can play some, and uh, uh, Kelly can play some. That would be a great situation. But obviously, you got to get into the game and see how it goes. I know how it was 2011. There wasn't any room for anybody to play other than Taj. You know, we were we were holding on to our hats right there to the very end. So 
Uh, but Kelly has had a really good fall camp. We've seen a lot of improvement from, for him. And, you know, if we do decide that he's going to play this year, we'd love for him to have an opportunity to, to get some experience uh, along with Nick. I asked you about freshmen and you answered about high How does Kelly handle that? Yeah, uh, as far as, go back. The, 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 